the Amazulu nation is in mourning. Regent Queen Mandombi Lamini Zulu has passed on just weeks after King Kutwil Zulitin was laid to rest. To speak to us about the legacy left behind by Queen Mandombi Lamini Zulu, we're joined by Zulu royal family historian Shalom Bata, who is, of course, also with the University of Zululand. Let's then talk about, you know, a, a lot of people always see the queens from a distance and they, they don't really know what they do, who they are. And certainly when you look at someone like Queen Mandombi, she, you know, it's a huge blow to, to, to the royal family. And not only because she was put in charge, but certainly looking at her history. Yes, um, first and foremost, condolences to the royal family in its entirety. It's very sad what has happened. Um, the late queen, Ndanengos, she got married in South Africa to King Zulitin in 1977, and she was a third wife. And um, because she's a princess, she then had a special status in the royal family. The purpose of the queens, except for taking care of the different uh, palaces, because remember in the Zulu culture, um, the king doesn't have a house or a home. Mm -hmm. They all belong to the queens. So we actually refer them to Ndlungkulu Waga Kanyela, who's the late one. Ndlungkulu Waga Linduzul, Ndlungkulu Mantu Floy, you know, Mantu Mam Triza, and so on. So it is a, their responsibility is to make sure that the king can conduct his business, taking care of the, of the, of the nation in a way that's admirable, mm -hmm. and also to ensure that their responsibilities towards the nation, they represent the fairer side of royalty. That was her main responsibility. However, Umtanengosi Ulazamini, she is the one to ex actually remind His Majesty, but now that apartheid had gone, the Zulu need to go back to their old Umkosi, um, you know, the, the ceremonies which had disappeared during apartheid, mm -hmm. you know, the Umkosi Umlanga, what is called the red dance. Umkosi Wogweshwama, which is the first festival. She made sure those things came to light. However, the one that most people don't even know about, Umkosi was Vival, meaning it's the one that happened at her palace, Wakanyela, whereby it was for women. The women folk would get together and talk as women. Because remember, women are the, you know, are the mm -hmm. power behind. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the Zulu culture, you say, in mm -hmm. if there's a problem, you go home and consult. Um, because you know the Zulu women do not fight for space in public; they have it. They have the power, you know. So she she was responsible for that. And when you then look at her, her position as the great wife, you know, with with of course um, looking at the fact that she was a princess, what were some of the responsibilities that she carried apart from then, um, you know, having to do these ceremonies and reminding the king of what needed to be done. But what were some added responsibilities that then she carries as the great wife? And also when you talk about the great wife, you can tell us briefly what this actually means. You know, it's almost like being the COO, not only of the palaces, but of the nation. You see, everything that happens, she was also part and parcel of the decision-making bodies. Remember, these majesty, all the Zulu kings and the emperors, do not rule on their own. Mm -hmm. You know, you're the king's council, you know. And as a matter of fact, you also have the women's council. King Shara is the one to bring it into four because he said any woman was past menopause. She was no more governed by unreliable hormones. She took decisions that put the nation first. So women were also allowed in the king's council. So she was part and parcel of that, at a very senior, at that, together with the other queens. So, like I said, the most of the responsibility was to make sure that those uh, um, uh, in course happen. Mm -hmm. And it is no small feat because, I mean, how many Zulus are there? Where are they? What is the current situation today? You know, having modernity. What are we doing about modernity? You know, do we let our children call us by first name? You guys as journalists, you know, do you also say to the president so-and-so by name? You say Cyril, or do you say Mr. President, or Rubaba? You understand? It's all those little things. It's a responsibility to make sure that the, the culture 
is embedded and it stays throughout all the modernity that's going on. Interesting. And, you know, as, as you described the, 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 the different responsibilities that she then had, but I also would like to take a sneak peek, and if you, you would allow me, just to tell us about the kind of person that she was at a personal level, because I know you've spent some time with the king to write your book. Did you ever get to meet her, and what were some of the qualities you observed in you her? You know, one thing I can say about her was she was very dignified. You could tell she grew up in a royal family. She was a, she was a princess through and through. You know, she carried herself like a princess. I mean, in her space, you'd feel, you'd feel the awe sameness, you know, very soft-spoken, but very determined. All the king's wives are very fierce, very fierce. You know, to survive in that environment, you need to know your story. But she was a very quiet somebody, and she was also a member of his Pity Pity regiment. I know this is a surprise. Many people do not know that much as his majesty every year, would um, you know establish, establish a, um, a regiment for young men during the course you know uh, right? Mm -hmm. There's also one for women, you mm -hmm. know, and she belonged to the one called Spiti Pit, and this is the part of the legacy that she's going to leave behind. I, 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 I just found that very interesting because it's one of those things that you never really think, um, you know, that a queen would get involved in. But when you then look um, at the other um, queens, um, what would then become their responsibilities? Because we've now ironed out what Queen Mandombi would then be in charge of. And you mm -hmm. talk about them being fierce, which surprises me because, you know, someone would think that they're just um, there to say, yeah, Boba, but God does certainly, it looks like it's a different environment altogether. What would then be some of their responsibilities? You know, I, I described her as a COO. Mm -hmm. Imagine the others being deputies. Mm. Remember, the Zulu are about 15 million people in, this, in South Africa alone. And you've got the greater Zulu nation that is outside South African borders. So everybody's majesty would be a portion work, whatever needed to be done. For instance, the one that is responsible when he's going overseas to a certain kind of you know, businesses, others will be involved in certain the health area. So they are all extremely busy. You know, sometimes it breaks my heart, if you'll allow me to say this. They'll say, what are these people doing? They do not know that they're forever, ever busy. Nobody's taken time out to go visit them and actually ask them, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? They are extremely busy. They are assisting his majesty to run the nation. Hmm. You know, you've got the girls, the, 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 the reed girls, the, who will attend the, the, the ceremony. Some of them now come as far, as far away as from Jamaica. Somebody must take care of that to make sure things are done in properly. Are the girls properly fed? Are they taken care of? You know? What about the, the, the elderly? Are they taken care of? Mm -hmm. What about the unemployment? One of them is responsible to find out what are we doing about so many young people unemployed? How about the issue that was very close to His Majesty was in the Bay Law Ball? Mm -hmm. That was a current one to say, young people say, I don't have money to get married. But the Law Ball, who brought these 15 cows? Only to discover that it, it was brought in by a Shepston. And it was part of the bigger picture to destroy the Zulu family. That who has 15 cows today? When before he put them, there was never a number. Mm -hmm. It was just a, 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 an issue to appreciate that, you know, I'm now going to get married to your daughter. She's going to be part of our family now. Here's what we, appreciation. Mm -hmm. But now there's actually a figure. And let's talk then about where the royal family finds itself now, because certainly um, in the public domain, there's a lot of reports, there's a lot of things that are coming out. And the succession process does not appear to be as smooth as, you know, others were expecting it to be. But are you surprised at this latest turn of events? Mahet, allow me to take a step back a little bit. You know, having a female who's a regent is not the first time. It started back in 1789 with uh, Princess Mkavai Gajam. And she was regent for five, five times over the five kings. Whenever something happened, she'd step in. Then the second one to become a regent was a, a Queen Nomvimbi, Ogam, Ogam Swede when her husband, King Kajai, was taken to jail in Cape Town and he ended up in London and came back. Also his son, King Denizul, when he was taken to St. Helena to exile, she also stepped up. That is just the women being regents. So it's not a new thing. Most people think this is, has never happened before. However, that there's a court case today. Again, it's not new. The late king's fa grandfather, uh, King Solomon, when he, he passed, he left a, a, um, a, um, a will. But nobody knew about the will, or they pretend not to know about the will. And there was, again, you know, people were vying for position. He had about 40 wives with so many sons. Everybody thought, my son is going to be the, the, the heir. 
until Queen Christina or Matatela brought out the will and said, this is what my husband left behind. Nobody believed her. Again, that for the first time, the Zulu had to go and settle the problems in a white man's court because nobody wanted to agree or believe her. So they took the handwriting, they verified it. Of course, it was a genuine a will. Mm -hmm. So that's why King Begu Zulu Cyprian became the king. And when you then look at, uh, you know, what is, is, is also, as in the public domain, contained in the papers, she also talks about, you know, that this is the, the, the first queen of Kosumatla. I mean, it talks about how she got into a civil union with the king, and thus um, things then make it tricky with all the other, you know, um, customary marriages. Does she then hold more power than the other wives, particularly when you look at even the great wife then? I'm not sure if there's a difference between a civil union and the traditional one, because if you can check the South African matrimony, the laws, mm -hmm. there's no difference anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a wife, whether it's in a civil union, this is my understanding. So I'm not sure if there is a problem. Perhaps let's leave that to the court to figure out. But I know as a point of departure, everybody is a wife, mm -hmm. however arrangements were made between the two parties. So they're all the wives of his, the late king and I think it's very important as well that we should give the royal family space to get organized, regroup as they're doing right now and in the next few days we're going to find out the way forward but they are currently working it. We don't have a leadership vacuum whatsoever. It is something like I said before, it is not new. Mm -hmm. His Majesty, the one who recently uh, passed, he had to wait three years when uh, Princess Mutsua is in was regent. Mm. So it's nothing really new. So uh, it's just a matter of time at the moment. And I know because she happens to be female, it seems a little bit, you know, out there. But it's a very difficult time for the royal family. And I must say also for Amazon, it's very, very difficult. Mm. And how then do you see the nation moving forward from this? Because as you say, um, it can be settled in the courts, but relations sometimes do become fractured by such, um, you know, action. You know, for, think of it this way. It will, will only come out stronger when something like this happens in future. In other words, we won't have plan B only, like plan B, C, D, and so on in the event all these things happen. But again, remember, they are working together as a unit. I mean, the, what you read in the media or out there, it's one thing that people are saying, but behind closed doors, are we really sure that people are fighting? Do we have proof that people are fighting? Remember, what they, are, they know they've got a big responsibility of taking care of the, of the, of the great Zulu nation. So it is not a crisis. Certainly. Um, thank you so much, uh, Shalo, for putting us in the picture there. Certainly, um, it looks like there's a lot of developments yes. that uh, you know, story. we are still going to really see in the coming days. That was Zulu Royal Family Historian Shalom Bata from the University of Zululand.